hello. Now I'm at the uh, ferry terminal in Puttgarten, northern Germany. And I have a short uh, trip across the, uh, the water to Denmark and a short drive back, a couple of hundred kilometers. So I think uh, it's time for a final report. And um, it's a positive report. The car behaved well and apart from um, the tires not really uh, being up to uh, the job on a track day, like uh, on a track day like at Spa, um, and the steering going a bit off, uh, the car was really good. Tomorrow I'll uh, check uh, the steering linkage and the front suspension and also uh, the rear suspension I mean, if something has moved and maybe put the, the car off, uh, off its center line or something. Um, and I, I'm, I took the, the direct uh, route uh, back from spa franc to, uh, to my place. I had uh, planned to do a, a trip over two days, just like uh, when we uh, went from Denmark uh, a couple of days ago. But uh, in the end I just took the motorways nice and easy. And I, uh, I followed uh, Gerstana until uh, Hamburg and then I took uh, off in my direction. So I'll be home at probably uh, 8 o'clock tonight and have a good night's sleep and say hello to the Mrs. Uh, Ultimus Dile. And uh, tomorrow I will check the car. And then you'll get the final, final report. The Ultimus Dile experience is all about embracing the true complexity of owning a classic sports car and using it. I try my best to present everything as readily usable while still retaining the full value and quality. The homologation file, start of the season. And if you get it, I love it. Welcome back to my garage. This is uh, Friday. I drove home Tuesday and um, Wednesday and Thursday was spent looking at uh, video and photographs from the internet. So the car's been sitting here in the garage, here actually, spilling oil from the differential. Here's a matchbox for uh, size comparison and at the front it's been dripping oil from I uh, suppose the engine or the gearbox this is engine oil and this is also engine oil Beginning to look a bit uh, suspicious. I think the car is leaking. But I suppose I shouldn't uh, worry too much about a, a very hot car leaking on the floor. Another thing was the, the off-centering of my steering. Here you can see uh, on a, one of the first uh, laps and here more pronounced on my way back from the track day. Um, I decided to uh, look more into the reason for this. I'll try and exchange the left and right front wheels to see if, uh, if it steers better. Just to eliminate if uh, it has anything to do with the thread of the, of the wheels being uh, worn. I could see that they were really taking some punishment, especially at the spa uh, circuit. And looking at the videos from the labs, uh, it looks like it became more and more uh, outspoken with the, uh, 
the off angle on the steering wheel. So let's try this. Otherwise, I will just uh, readjust the, the steering. If the tires were worn off to one side, it would show itself by shifting the tires uh, left to right and the steering wheel would be off to the other side. The action of the steering is very taut and nice and of course there's more slack in the outer positions. That's a part of the characteristic of such a steering box. But uh, putting the wheels back on, it uh, it's time for a little test drive to see if the, the steering wheel would have centered itself or actually gone the other way maybe. And uh, no, I think it's uh, quite evident that the tires are perfectly okay. They might be worn, but they're not uh, off to one side. So I went back to the garage and uh, suspended a thin, tight string between these two poles. I put the steering wheel straight ahead and uh, had the string at an even distance from the car. I measured the distance from the rim to the string and you can see the rear wheel is a parallel, whereas the front wheel on the left side has a 1mm toe in. This is of course not uh, absolutely accurate measuring, but uh, it's just for comparison. Going to the other side, I get uh, an even rear wheel. And look at that, four millimeters toe in on the front wheel. That's too much. And it's uh, only in one side of the car. It's very significant actually. And putting the steering wheel in this position, which was actually the position I saw at the track, takes away half of the toe-in of the right wheel and it toes the left wheel in slightly. So it tells me that uh, the right-hand side wheel had too much toe-in, whereas the left side wheel was okay to begin with. And it explains that uh, I now have 5mm toe-in, 2.5mm either side. Before I adjust anything, I'll check that I have immediate reaction between the steering wheel and the front wheels. This means that there's no slack. Here you see a diagram of uh, how the steering works on a Giulietta. On the driver's side of the car you see the steering column going into the steering box. And it's uh, mirrored on the right side of the car with a, an idler steering. And, um, the rods uh, number four, both sides, uh, connects to the steering arm on the spindle. So uh, by uh, adjusting number three in the middle to get an even uh, action of the system and adjusting uh, steering arms number four, left and right, you get uh, the distribution of the steering uh, movement. And this is how it looks for real. Here we have the axle coming out of the idler box and the connection to the steering rod. And here it connects to the steering arm on the spindle. So this uh, is the steering rod number four with uh, two nuts and bolts holding it. One end has a right hand thread and the other hand has a left hand thread. The idea is to adjust it to get uh, the right action for both wheels. So, that did it. Look at that. So, uh, what remained for me was to uh, check all the fluids this is uh, the brake fluid reservoir on the firewall and uh, 
there's plenty left. Uh, I was a bit uh, worried uh, how much the linings would be worn, uh, but there's a lot of it, so uh, it didn't really uh, make a difference. I used a lot of water actually. I poured in uh, more than two liters of water during uh, stopovers. But uh, remember I have an overflow that runs directly onto the ground. I don't have a, an expansion tank that will recirculate the, the water into the radiator once the car gets cold. So uh, no uh, worries here, but it's important to have it uh, topped up properly. The oil can, uh, the, or the condition of the oil can be seen here on the inside of the of this uh, lid. It uh, looks okay. And the uh, oil level, I I ran uh, two and a half, three thousand kilometers, and um, poured in almost one liter of oil. And uh, remember, the car's been running at uh, at high power and high revs. Uh, you can see here that the level is up to right there and it's at the max. So um, it didn't uh, use anything on the, on the way back on the motorway. Nice and easy driving at around uh, 110, 120 kilometers per hour. The, uh, the engine compartment uh, as a whole was uh, oozed over by, um, by a lot of uh, juice spraying out of the, the carburetors. And, um, you can see this is not uh, as much uh, dirt coming into the engine as much as it is uh, goo coming out of the, the carburetors and it uh, sprays on the on the inside wall here and actually the uh, everything is uh, is uh, covered in in this uh, in this goo um, I think I'll have to uh, clean that and um, what remains now is the last uh, fluid is um, the petrol, of course. Let's look into the petrol filter. And uh, as a little postlude, I uh, took the car for a drive and did a pair of uh, roundabouts yesterday evening and suddenly I had tow out so um, now I've, um, I've uh, prepared another measurement set up here I checked all the um, bolts in the in the steering and I found that the front of the three bolts holding the idler house was actually loose by half a turn and this would mean that it could uh, flex a little bit and it meant that the whole uh, synchronization of the right side steering was uh, out, of, uh, out of position. I remembered back when Stefan did the car that uh, the idler house only had two bolts and he did the, the third one. You can see it here, three bolts in position number two. If uh, that uh, front bolt is missing it will allow the house to, to tilt just a little bit, maybe half a millimeter and uh, that tilt will move the point and the rigidity of the whole steering linkage will create another pivoting point at the front and uh, the moving of the idler box will pull the steering rod towards the car and this will result in the tow in that I first experienced. So it had nothing to do with the steering linkage, it was just a matter of fixing the idler box uh, securely to the frame of the car and in the end nothing was uh, wrong with the car it took the punishment well uh, on both tracks and i'm a satisfied owner an italian classic sports car <laughs> okay uh, i think that concludes um, the new and spa adventure see you later